Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, transforming the way people think and work so their organizations can thrive. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Marsha Redman. Marsha is the secret weapon that elite law firms and lawyers have gone to for over 20 years to have a more powerful presence when they speak. She has become the go-to expert teaching professionals worldwide how to fix their virtual presence so they can speak with confidence and engage powerfully to win clients, have impact, and own their own niche. Marsha is a former practicing attorney and award-winning TV journalist. She practiced law at Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, and was an award-winning consumer and investigative reporter on television in major markets. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Marsha Redman. Thank you so much, Ed. I'm really excited to be here. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Well, first off, Marsha, why do you do what you do? Well, it's been a long road. Um, as you mentioned, I practice law at a large law firm. Uh, I think it made sense for me to be a lawyer, but I found out once I got there that it just wasn't the right match between my skills and, and what I like to do, which is what I like to call standing up and speaking. Um, I love public speaking. So over the course of uh, almost 30 years, I've kept reinventing myself so that I could speak for a living and talk about issues that I could really help people with. So what I've ended up doing is working mostly with lawyers at large law firms, my, my former world, and teaching them how to have presence. So how to do thought leadership, do presentations, and get useful information in front of their clients so that they could build their practices and, and build their businesses. And talk to me a little bit about the work that you've done with folks on improving their virtual presence. Well, this has been an exciting time for me. Um, I used to think that my world had gone full circle when I was able to work with lawyers at law firms, you know, in the position that I used to be in and give them the guidance and the help around communication so they could be successful. I thought that was full circle. But when the pandemic hit and all of us needed to learn how to communicate on camera, how to actually uh, do business, uh, do presentations, do thought leadership over Zoom and other platforms, uh, now I know my world has truly come full, full circle. So it's been uh, an exciting time. And I, I know I've been able to help a lot of people get their arms around uh, this new world that we're in. So I, I feel like... We, Many of us have learned virtual communicating. Uh, the challenge and the bad news is our next stage as we go back to our offices of doing hybrid communication is about 10 times harder. So uh, we're not done yet, that's for sure. Why is it 10 times harder? Well, the challenge is, you know, um, as, while you and I now we're talking, we're looking at each other over Zoom as we're recording the audio, and it's it feels like one-on-one, -on -one, which is the true power of virtual communication. The challenge with hybrid is when some people are together in a room, they will talk to each other and, and connect in the way that we did in, in the old times. And anyone who's also joining virtually is left out, in essence. And as a, certainly as a presenter, as a speaker who's communicating in a hybrid fashion, it's that much more complicated. And of course, the, the challenge with any communication, uh, any of these formats, is that we need to connect with our audience. We need to get their attention, keep their attention, and hopefully get them to engage with us. So you know, we think of the paradigm when we're all in the same room together, we know how that works. Uh, but now when you add on the notion that some of us are together, some of us are at distance, it's much more challenging. And, and there are feelings about it. The folks who are, who are at distance feel left out. They feel, uh, in many cases in corporate America and in businesses, they feel like they've lost their seat at the table and that the people who are together in, in person have an advantage. So it's uh, it's a new challenge for sure. So is it, ju is it just a matter of making sure to invite them into the conversation a little bit more? Is that part of it? That is part of it. So to uh, whoever's running the meeting or running the presentation to make sure that they that they reach out specifically uh, to ask for questions from the people who are virtual and wait. That's the trick. You know, it always takes a lot longer for people to respond and we're uncomfortable with that silence. But there are other things we can do as well. Uh, there are uh, various apps that you can use that level the playing field in essence. So you can do polling 
using an app on your phone. And so the people in the room and the people at distance have exactly the same experience. They're voting their choices over their phone. And then a slide, usually a live slide shows up on the shared screen and everyone sees it in the same fashion. And so that gives you a chance to get to get buy-in, to get, to get interaction and engagement from everyone. Uh, also, whiteboards are great. It's another way to engage everyone in a similar fashion. And I guess also you, the use of the, the groups, perhaps, groups function within Teams or, or Zoom to connect people, those people together in smaller groups and then have them report out back to the main group. Yes, absolutely. And that's a great way to do brainstorming as well and, and, and problem solving is to use the groups function on Zoom uh, breakout sessions. Those can be very effective. It takes a little bit of extra work, of course, when you have people in person to do breakouts in person while simultaneously doing breakouts in Teams or Zoom. But it, it's, it's not that hard. You just, you just have to try it a couple of times and find that it's really pretty easy. The, the main impetus, I think, will be for uh, companies and corporations to understand it really is that important so that everyone, everyone feels connected, everyone feels engaged, and we get to hear from everyone. Yeah, one of the things I found that myself doing is making sure that when I was asking questions with virtual presentations to you almost have to when you're looking for agreement, you have to look for not agreement, right? So instead of saying, does everybody get it? Well, they, then you're expecting everybody to participate. But what you have to do is say it in the inverse and really say, oh, is is there anybody who is not f staying with us? <laughs> Yes, and that's an adjustment for sure. And the other one, I think, uh, the the big piece that I think many many of us are missing is that uh, I think I've heard this from a lot of lawyers who are the folks I work with most often. They're saying, "Oh, this is great. It's almost over. I don't I don't really have to learn how to be great on camera over Zoom or Teams or or WebEx because we're going back." I am 100% certain we are not going back. Uh, we know from certainly professional services clients, they like virtual pitches. They like virtual meetings. They do not pe want people coming in person to pitch them anymore because it's it's a better experience for them. And so I, I urge uh, really all business people to understand that the most important skill from this moment forward is to get good at virtual communicating, whatever form it is that, that you have in your business. Because understand, uh, you know, when we show up on camera, you know, think about your last Zoom call. You see what we call in broadcast TV news, the talking head video. And that talking head video comes with automatic authority because we've all spent our lives seeing heads of state and uh you know, government officials, experts who are framed in this way, you know, from the chest up in the middle of the screen. And so you get to borrow that authority as long as you look, you know, you're well framed, you have good lighting, you're looking at the camera and every single person at the other end of that virtual communication feels like they're getting to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And imagine that connection to your client and prospective client. But if we do what most of us do, which is we don't turn the lights on, we don't look at the camera, we have a flat, low energy voice, we're losing out on that opportunity. And recognize if you have competitors and they're good at it and you're not, you're at a real disadvantage. And Marsha, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? Uh, a hero of mine is... is um, really anybody that has the nerve and the fortitude to leave a comfortable job and start something new. Uh, for me, as a person who had my perfect career ahead of me at a large law firm, which is a, an amazing and wonderful law firm, I had a friend uh, who left his job as a lawyer because he wanted to be an airline pilot. And I watched that for about a year. And I thought, you know what? I can do that too. So I left the law. I went back to TV news, which is what I had done before then and continued reinventing myself because I knew I had a talent. I knew I had a gift, uh, really only one. And I wanted a chance to use that. So those are my heroes. Every single person that takes the risk and keeps pushing forward to do what they're meant to do or to do what they most enjoy. And lastly, Marsha, how can somebody contact you? It's pretty easy. Uh, you can always email me. My easy email is marsha at marsha.com. And that's M-A-R-S-H-A. 
And I also have a, a great handout that's helpful if you're interested in virtual presence. And you can go to the URL presencetips.com. All right, Marsha Redman, thanks for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you so much, Ed. It was really fun. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. 